Hello, good day to everyone, and I welcome you to the another episode on Mold Flow's tips and workflow. In this episode, we are going to look upon another announcements and improvement for the Autodesk Mold Flow 2024. Probably, if you have been using 2023 uh, for a while and associated Scandium with it, uh, probably 2023.2. to scandium you would come to know that assembly analysis was included in it and if you've been using moldflow for almost like 3 years or more than that you would come to know that assembly analysis was still a part of like an a, a scandium well the reason was that we were evaluating it unless and until it goes through the lab test and we try to do a, some correlations with the actual part we don't put it into a commercial version probably this is the one that differentiate uh, more flow from the the other solutions so in assembly analysis probably if you have not tried what we are trying to simulate is to capture the actual manufacture warpage measured with the constraint applied so this inspiration was given by one of the you know the user and as well as the supply to the automotive probably he wants to see that what would be the warpage after the component is been mounted onto the vehicle or onto the mounting points we been using anchor plane you know creating the graphs that was fine but he was still not been satisfied with it he wants to see that what would be the warpage or which locations in my part will pop out if i do the mounting that was heard and it took little bit of time for us to implement because as i mentioned that it has to go through the the testing and and the validation so how this process is been set up you need to be on to the warpage place a warpage page and in the warpage page probably you would able to find that assembly analysis now the i will show you through the actual product demonstration as well but specify the shrinkage compensation in the setup so where do you get probably you will get it from the tool maker probably you would have earlier experience if not please go and refer to your material database file probably that would define the average value but that is only a indication value if you have to be very specific probably you have to bit research and consult with the different stakeholders to put an exactly very precise value the another thing is to assign the fixation point now these are the fixation point nothing but and mounting locations how the part is going to be mounted which are the locations that you want to mount it and we also introduce a new results when the analysis will be completed you will get a new result called the deviation from the part design so when the shrinkage compensation is been applied you need not to apply the shrinkage compensation again it will be included in the deviation or the on the deviation from the part design now it is been available for mid plane dual domain and 3d as well so i let me take you through that so previously or we'll still continue to have the warpage plot like you see a normal warpage we try to put an anchor plane and this is a combination of the shrinkage and warpage then probably we try to apply the you know uh, shrinkage compensation to it and and differentiate the warpage and the shrinkage from it now with the check mark of the assembly analysis when you are on to the warpage plane you will get a new plot called the deviation from the part design so irrespective whether you apply the fix constraint or not or fixation point if you check on to the assembly analysis you will get a deviation from the part design of course you have to add the shrinkage compensation to it and if you have already check in the shrink uh, sorry assembly analysis and you added the fixation points like i here i added over here so you should be able to uh, see the deviation from the part design when the constraints are been applied so this is will be actually how the pa part would behave after mounting and you could able to see that the part is matching to the cad means the shrinkage is been already been applied to it 
Let's look at the workflow. So how does it works? Two things to need to set up in this. Set up the constraint with the assembly position and make sure that they are using a warpage analysis. So when you go and try pick the nodes and in the border condition tab, you try to put the fixation points, you will be asked where the constraint to be used. Please check in as warpage analysis. In earlier version, there was an option say that assembly analysis now that's been removed. It's referred to as as warpage analysis from 2024. In the warpage setup page again, uh, adjust the constraint according to the shrinkage allowance and specify the average isotropic shrinkage value. It doesn't allow you to specify the unisotropic values. It has to be a single value in this case. You know, uh, so if you don't specify the constraint, but you still run the shrinkage analysis, you will get the deviation from the part design within the shrinkage compensation value applied to it. Right. Let's look into the uh, actual software. How does it works? I have taken a, a same earlier part. And in this case, what I did is uh, before I get started with the analysis, uh, you need to choose upon those nodes uh, where you want to put it, pick in the constraints. So like in this case, I have picked up on the nodes over here and then you go into the your boundary conditions and say that in constraints, say that fixed constraints. Let me show it already. I've been applied over here and then fixed constraint and you should be able to see that I have used a warpage analysis over here. So fixed constraint, you have option whether you want that to be rotated so you can rotate it as uh, closer to the actual reality you want to go through that it and uh, yeah in the on the warpage page probably you need to specify adjust the constraint position according to the mold shrinkage value you have to put the mold shrinkage value over here as i mentioned that even if you don't apply the constraint if you check upon the you know uh, constraint position according to the mold shrinkage value allowance it will show you a result called deviation from the cat design or the part design or here okay so i have run this analysis and let me check it the results so, so if you go into the advanced settings and i just want to show you the where you get a shrinkage value so you'll get a nominal shrinkage value over here and it should be available for i respect you whether the uh whether the uh, material has been tested for the shrinkage or not, uh, still the uh, you can perform the assembly analysis. It's nothing to do with the uh, the crimps data or the shrinkage testing. So I have run the. This is normally like an you know deviation from all effects. This is normal like in our performing a warpage analysis but something that i would refer it to a result called as a deviation from the part design and this will give the actual uh, deviation from this one and probably you can go into the results and you can also say restore because i don't want to see the uh, the results after the anchor plane but i want to see that the results has been after the uh, this already has a shrinkage applied now you don't need to apply the shrinkage again don't do that it will be twice the shrinkage been applied this is with the actual part how the deviation will work actually okay so this is something i always like to refer it um, go ahead and try it at your end and see uh, the how the new assembly analysis is helping you to improve your workflow with that probably i will talk to you next time and take care bye